Destination Mark. Hey guys, how's it going? Marcelo here, and welcome to 1-1, a show where we look back at the first level of some iconic games and break down what makes them great and not so great. It's time to glide into the world of dragons as we take a look at Stonehill from the original Spyro the Dragon. And aiding me through this journey today is Miharu. Hey guys, it's Miharu. Don't you sometimes feel like Spyro 1 doesn't get the full credit it deserves? And Somniac essentially pioneered the modern panoramic view and level of detail principles that games still use today, and the game itself is still tons of fun without the extra bells and whistles its sequels would get. It's a straightforward tale of one little dragon's venture through these giant worlds. While I've always preferred Spyro 2 and 3 overall, I will agree that nothing quite compares to the vibe that the first game gives. Spyro 1 is a pure platformer with a unique charm that the sequels don't really have. The way it uses barren spaces to trick players into thinking the levels are bigger than they are, the way its challenges require strategic thinking and perfect execution instead of your typical trial and error minigames, even its soundtrack stands out amongst the others for the emotions it evokes. Now let's take a step back and start from the beginning. This is Stone Hill. We glide through the portal in Artisans and land in a grassy field. Again, from just this first shot alone, you can gather so much information about what kind of game this is going to be before you even start to walk around. Spyro is a more open style platformer, so we're not just constricted to a linear pathway. We can fully run around, torch enemies, collect treasure, and most importantly to this episode, explore multiple pathways. And here in level 1 we have just that. While you can run straight forward and immediately find the exit portal mere seconds away from your starting point, you see that there's so much more to do, and two other paths to check out. Let me start by reiterating that I think Stone Hill is one of the best introductory levels in any game ever. From the moment you touch down, you're presented with a few choices. As Mark said, going forward will lead you right to the exit portal, but we're going to start by going left. This will take you down a small path which opens up into a large circular room with treasure all around and a dragon right in the middle. That dragon is Lindar, who you may remember as the one who insulted Nasty Nork in the opening cutscene. He tells us that, should we ever run into trouble, the last dragon platform we stepped on will be our checkpoint. After running out of there, you clear up the rest of the main area and realize there's a well here. You jump down and find more treasure and another dragon, Gavin, who reminds you to keep an eye on Sparks' color, which indicates his health. Side note, I love Sparks as both a character and a game mechanic. He's like Aku Aku in that he always follows you around and protects you, and having to watch him clears up the HUD and eliminates the need for a health bar. It's a mechanic that feels very naturally integrated into the world, just continuing to add to the genius game design. Back on topic though, you see a locked chest with a keyhole, so keep in the back of your mind that we'll be needing a key. You take the whirlwind back up, and now it's time for the right path. Take note of that laughter you hear while charging through the tunnel as well. That's something we'll have to deal with a little later. Right out of the tunnel, we're met with another open area, more rams, and a new enemy type, shepherds. Clear them out while grabbing all the treasure, make sure to check every corner, and then focus your attention on the tower in the middle. Along with that taunting laughter in the distance, you probably also heard the rumbling of a dragon statue. Let's head on up the whirlwind and rescue him, shall we? This is where we meet Gildas, one of my personal favorite dragons, who helps Sparrow out with a hint on gliding. And this can immediately be put to the test, as we look out and see an open spot with some gems that we can glide to. It's upon making our way here that the scope of the game starts to reveal itself. We started in a small secluded area, almost like in a little bowl, but now we're on top of the metaphorical rim looking down. And from here we can see where we started, the out of bounds areas, and we can even check out a cool little boundary effect, and there are still more things to collect. So we do just that. We explore, find the source of that laughter by chasing down a flaming this egg thief, collect the remaining gems, and over here you can see the exit portal. But look behind the exit and there's a secret little beach area down there. We drop down and take a look, finding more gems, and here's that hidden key. With this we can run back down to the well and unlock that chest, grab the remaining gems, and finally make our way back to the end. If you didn't already free him, we've got one more dragon to rescue, Aster, who explains how exit portals work, and with that we can hop in, and that is Stonehill. As I said before, I hold Stone Hill in high regard amongst other introductory levels in games. For as simple as it may seem, it gives you a taste of basically everything you'll need to know about Spyro 1's level structure going forward. It teaches you that things are not always what they appear to be. There will be branching pathways, hidden areas, and sometimes you'll need to look a bit harder to find those missing gems. Overall, a fantastic way to begin the game. I couldn't have said it better myself, and Somnia put true passion and attention to detail in every level they crafted. And from the very beginning, you can see how apparent that is. 
The joy of running around, beating up bad guys, finding new places to go and secrets to uncover. That's what makes the first Spyro game so fun and Stone Hill a fantastic first level. A huge shout out to Miharu for collaborating with me on this episode and until next time, take care.